Welcome to Sports Jam for the week of February 11th. I'm John Jacobson. And I'm Jay Wilcox. A busy show today as we bring you section Nordic and Alpine skiing, plus plenty of hockey and basketball. And we'll meet a dynamic diving duo for YZ in our Sports Jam Spotlight. Up first, section girls hockey. Section 6AA is filled with strong teams, meaning even the number four versus number five seed quarterfinal figured to be a good one as Buffalo and YZ faced off. First period, and Bison defender Allison Ruski picks the top corner with her shot. It's a power play goal and helps the Bison take a 2-1 to one lead after one. Coach Becky Wacker, the wise out of Trojans, trail 3-1 in the second when they pull within a goal. Ellen Refwich bangs home the rebound. Trojans later tie to make it 3-3 through two. Third period, Buffalo goes back in front. Emily Wiegand shot is stop. At number eight, Abby Haluska jams the puck in, and it's 4-3 Bison. The Trojans get the equalizer when Steph Kirk scores off the rebound in front, and it's a 4-4 game. But the Bison winner with a power play marker with under three and a half minutes to play. Emily Varner with the goal, and the Bison win it 5-4. Also in 6AA, Armstrong Cooper meeting third seed Hopkins. Steph Olson to Holly Enderley, and her shot deflects off the defenseman's stick and over Aaron O'Neill. It's 1-0 Armstrong Cooper. Hopkins controls the first period, but Lexi Ripka is sharp, stopping all 11 Royal shots to keep her team in front. Second period on a major power play. Grace Bazal shoots, and Jillian DeYoung tips it home for the Royals, and it's 1-1. One to -one. But Tori Adams sets up Kinsley Kellenbeck for her first goal, and Armstrong Cooper retakes the lead at 2-1. to one. And watch this. as a bad bounce cost Hopkins. It bounces over the defenseman's stick, and Olsen is first to the puck. And she'll beat the buzzer with a sweet move. It comes with one second left in the period, and it is three to one. And Ripka keeps it that way with a big game in net. Armstrong Cooper scores a three to one upset, and we'll hear from them later in the show. Also in six double A, North Metro hangs in for a while before falling to top seed Minnetonka seven to one, despite 65 saves from Lauren Torborg. Maple Grove gives second seed Vanille to battle before the Red Knights prevail three to nothing. So in the semis Wednesday, it's Buffalo Minnetonka at 5.30 and Armstrong Cooper versus Benilde at 7.30 at parade. In Section 5AA, Champlain Park faced district rival Anoka in the quarterfinals and the Rebels played a great game. First period, Maggie Craig follows her own shot and pops in the rebound. 1-0 Champlain Park. Later in the first, Leah Elledge makes a move around the defenseman and lasers a shot top corner for a 2-0 Rebels lead. Second period, Anoka's Blair Perrant gets the breakaway, but Hannah Ghetto with a great save, keeping the Tornadoes off the board. Still in the second, Anoka on the power play, but Haley Adair gets the breakaway and scores a shorthanded marker. 3 0 Rebels. And Ghetto stops 30 of 31 Anoka shots to keep the Rebels in control. Elledge adds an empty netter. Champlain Park wins 4-1. to one. Rebels will play defending section champion Moundsview in the next round. Now to boys basketball where Hopkins has climbed to number two in the state class 4A rankings. They may not stay there though after facing arch rival Minnetonka. The skippers on their home court for this one. Riley Daring misses the jumper but Justin Mose will hang in the air to get a nice put back basket here for Minnetonka but they trail it early. Jake Wright is known for his three-point shooting, but this time he shows he can score inside, getting the hoop in traffic for a 19-16 Royals lead. The next one isn't pretty, but Hopkins will get a buzzer beater as Jamal Davis struggles to get control, forces up a two-hander, and it bounces around and drops for Hopkins. But Minnetonka takes off in the second half. Grant Kellogg dishes to Andrew Groves in the corner for a three as the skippers grab the lead on Hopkins. Malcolm Moore drives to the hoop to score as Minnetonka hands Hopkins a 73-61 defeat. Three teams from our area and the Minnesota Christian Athletic Association are ranked in the top 10 in Class A boys basketball. Second-ranked Maranatha has now defeated the other two. Mustangs hosting number nine West Lutheran. First half and MCA's Grantham Gillard drives baseline, scores and is fouled. Mustangs lead 21-13 at halftime. Second half, and the Mustangs' Isaiah Hansen with a nice head fake and drives the lane and scores. Put Maranatha up by 12. 
West Lutheran's Morgan Barth tries to keep the Warriors close. He drains a three-pointer to cut the MCA lead to nine. Then Barth pops in another three, scores 11 points in the night. And the Warriors are within eight points. But Maranatha pulls away from there. Shan Chima takes the pass from Garrison Gillard to score. Short time later, Garrison Gillard knocks down a three from the top of the key to make the margin 17 points. He scores 27 in the game to lead Maranatha to a 68-36 win. The Mustangs are now 11-0 in the MCAA Conference. In boys hockey, Maple Grove was skating for a season sweep of Andover last week. The Huskies came to Maple Grove riding a five-game winning streak. In the first period, the Huskies buzz the net. Brady Barthold with the initial shot. Christian Mose pops the puck in on the rebound for a one to nothing Andover lead. In the second, Maple Grove's Josh Passholt sets up Sam Valerius, but his shot goes wide, and it remains 1-0 through 2. But the Crimson get one early in the third. Valerius with two quick goals, Nate Erickson with a nice setup here. And that one makes it 2-1 Maple Grove, and sophomore goalie Calvin McKinney stonewalls and over the rest of the way. He makes 26 saves. Maple Grove wins 2-1. Also in boys hockey, Armstrong hosted Champlain Park. First period, the Rebels' Ryan McNeil with the short pass to Reese Woods for the shot and goal. Champlain Park leads 1-0. Late in the period, Luke Dahlman skates out from the corner, comes out front and scores. Champlain Park takes a 2-0 lead after one. Second period, Dahlman almost gets another one. His shot hits the pipe. But number seven, Bryce Plunkett scores on the rebound to make it 3-0. Armstrong gets on the board late in the period. Eric Udelhoven with a nice backhander up high for his first goal of the season. It's a 4-1 game through two. The Falcons pull closer in the third. Nick Malmgren sets up Tommy Wood nicely for the goal, and it's 4-2. That's the final, though, as the Rebels sweep the season series. Time for our first break here on Sports Jam. And when we come back, we'll hit the hill and trails for highlights from Section Alpine and Nordic Ski Meets. The first state action for the winter sports season is this week. Local athletes in Alpine and Nordic skiing head to Bowabic for state competition. Highlights from last week's Section 2 Nordic Meet. And the girls' ways, Wyzetta dominates. Elena Sonneson wins the pursuit format with a time of 32 minutes, 54 seconds. Nearly a minute ahead of her teammate, Anna French, who places second for the Trojans. Then it's a Wyzetta Avalanche. Bryn Balls Barker, Lauren Farquhar, Michaela Keller-Miller, and Nicole Schneider all finishing in a pack for Wyzetta. And Christine Keller-Miller finishes 10th. The Trojans win the team title and will go to state together. It's cool that qualify as an individual but to have your team there at state with you it's I mean nothing could be better you have all of your closest friends there and you're all rooting for each other and you're all just you want them to do as well as they can and it, it's just so much better when you have a whole team right behind you. In the boys section two meet at Worth Eden Prairie's Tom By wins the classic and the skate races in a total time of 28 minutes 58 seconds. Eagles dominate with five skiers in the top ten. They win the team title. Maple Grove Sean Heaton on the right of your screen finishes eighth. He qualifies for state, as does teammate Mario Calabria, who takes the last qualifying spot for state. Last year, I was psyched to go to state, but come right now, I didn't want to go alone. I did not want to make that four-hour trip up north alone, and I got my best friend to go with me now. We're going to state together. It's going to be sick. Well, three local squads were part of the Section 5 Nordic Championship meet. Great weather for the start of the boys' pursuit at Worth. Osseo Park Center and Champlain Park, the teams from our area in this race. It's a close finish on the left and black. Tyler Gilbert of Irondale races to the win. He's able to hold off Moundsview's Steve Hokinson. Osseo looking to contend for the team title, and an Orioles group comes in together in the 8, 9, and 10 spots. First, Kevin Kerwick, followed by Austin Schumer and then Tanner Wetzel. They all qualify for state, but fall just short as a team. And on to the girls' race, where Osseo's Sarah Bezdecek starts in fourth place in the pursuit format based on first race times. The section champ, Nikki Recker of Roseville, and she helps her Raiders ski to the team championship as well. And two local girls are headed to state, both from Osseo, Bezdecek. 
holds on to the fourth spot to move on to Giants Ridge. And she will be joined by Kaylee Shagan, who places sixth. And here's what a couple of the Orioles state qualifiers had to say. We've all had the greatest race of our life, and big thanks to Rosh and all the Oscar ski team. Um, it was tough. I've never really, this is my third year skiing, so um, it was, it's been a journey, and um, uh, we all just raced as hard as we could. I mean, it's one thing to go individually and to know that every minute you went hard and every minute that you put into it pays off. But when to see that your whole team, every minute that they put in and every hill and every last bit of wax, it just all pays off. And John, the Irondale boys and Roseville girls won those Section 5 team titles. Meanwhile, several local skiers qualified for state out of Section 6. Peter Worth certainly a busy place last week for Nordic skiing. In the boys' pursuit, Harris Dernberger wins for Hopkins in a total time of 29 minutes, 44 seconds. Armstrong's John Delaney comes in about two minutes later. He makes state by placing fifth. His teammate, Tom Norman, there in the middle, gets 11th place, and he also qualifies for state. In the girls' race, Hopkins' Sarah Benton still going strong at the end. She wins the section in 35 minutes, 4 seconds. Armstrong's Hannah Run isn't far behind. Rudd takes second place. Sienna Ellingson of Hopkins is third. And this is Anna Neighbor placing fourth overall for the Falcons. Here's what two local state qualifiers had to say. It was a tough race, a lot of hills. Um, the girl Sarah in front of me, she passed me, but I tried to stay down and hold her as long as I could, but she ended up beating me. It was a good race, though. It was just kind of me and another, me and uh, Sean Cork started out, and uh, I just figured, I don't know, I'm pretty sick today, so <laughs> I just kind of dropped back and I had some room because there's kind of a gap in between the top five and everyone else, so we just, I just kind of hung in between. The Hopkins boys and girls won the section and qualify as teams for Thursday state meet. Other local girls state qualifiers include Cooper's Ellie Evans and Benilde St. Margaret's Amanda Kotzer. Also, Andrew Egger of Benilde makes state on the boys' side. Spots at state were up for grabs for alpine skiers at section competition also, including at the section five meet at Windy Afton Alps. This is girls action and Mackenzie Cook of Maple Grove is headed to state. Cook's second run time is 33-43 as she places 13th overall. Wyzetta's Laura Gove is also state bound. She places 16th with a total time of 111.03 for two runs. She's the only Trojan skier to advance. Here's the girls' champ, Rosie Hust of Orono, just an eighth grader, but takes her second section championship with a time of 104.51. On to the boys' action, the individual champ, Jack McNeil of Blake, takes the top spot with a total time of 101.47, and he helps the Bears reach state as team runner-up. Peter Kiesel of Breck skis well. His second run of 30.52 helps him finish fourth, and most importantly, he saves his fall for after he's done racing here. Steve Weekman of Hopkins grabs the final individual state berth. The Orno boys and Blake girls won section titles to qualify for Wednesday's state meet. Maple Grove, Osseo, and Centennial are battling for the Northwest Suburban Conference lead in girls basketball. Maple Grove at Centennial in a pink out game Friday. Paige Waitasha pops a three pointer from the left side. Centennial jumps out to an early 11 4 lead. 17 on the night for Waitasha. Kayla Jones answers with a three of her own, part of a 17-point night for Jones, but Maple Grove trails 29-19 at the half. They start a comeback after trailing by double digits. Angie Davison drives all the way for the layup. She scores 15 in the game. The rally continues with good passing for the Crimson, and it leads to a layup for sophomore Julie Haggart, and the Crimson pull with him five. But Centennial hangs on with plays like this. Destiny Morris rebounds the miss by her sister Deja. Centennial wins 61-55 to take over sole possession of first in the conference. Earlier in the week, Osseo battled district rival Park Center. The Pirates on their home floor. They lost by one at Osseo in the first meeting. Osseo gets out to a great start. Good ball rotation here leads to an open look for a three for Janae Morton, and she buries it. Morton scores 28. It's 9-1 early. In transition, Maddie Malone drives and sets up Courtney Calkins for two plus a foul. 17-7 Orioles. Maddie Sorensen's Pirates battle back. Olivia Bug swings it over to McKenna Dubois for the three, and the Pirates are within one. Osseo gets out and runs here as Morton threads the needle. The aisle court for the layup. 
Port scores 17, and Osseo's up one at halftime. It's Osseo's night. Morton has the ball get away, but Port is there to pick it up and score. The Orioles win 74-61, but they lost to Champlain Park on Friday. Section meets are this week in high school gymnastics. Maple Grove and Osseo met in the final Northwest Suburban Conference meet of the season. This is Osseo's Katarina Hooperts on the vault. She lands a score of 8.4 and finishes third in the event. Maple Grove's Rachel Bailey scores an 8.65 on the vault. She's the Crimson's top all-rounder with a meet score of 32.55. Alex Dukason of Maple Grove ties for third on the uneven bars. The sophomore earns a mark of 8.05, helping the Crimson win this night. The top all-arounder Thursday was Osseo's Amanda Gullard. She wins the vault and the bars with a score of 8.45. The Maple Grove wins the meet over Osseo 130.625 to 120.925. Those teams, along with Champlain Park and Park Center, are part of the eight-team Section 5AA, 5AA meet Wednesday night at Park Center. That's right, and then Wyzetta and Hopkins competing in the Section 6AA meet. That's coming up Saturday at Hopkins. Next up in our Sports Jam Spotlight, we'll meet two Wyzetta High School divers with state meet aspirations. Diving is an individual sport, but there's also an important team aspect that can't be overlooked. In this week's Sports Jam Spotlight, Jason Malolo brings us the story of two Wyzetta divers that are pushing each other to be their best. Eric Mitchell and Caleb Zarns are very different divers. He does the practice as well, but he does the meets even better. It's like you don't expect it from practice, and he can just you know, put it together for a meet, so that's kind of interesting fact about Eric. Caleb is a very kind and conscientious diver. He's like very safe and very um, methodical. He's, he's a thinker. But you can't argue with the results. Mitchell has won every dual meet for the Trojans this winter and Zarns is usually a close second. At this point in the season, there's not a lot of tinkering. That's too risky. With sections next week, Mitchell and Zarns are working to make their dives perfect. You try to find like the best set of dives that's best for you, you know, like to so get the highest score and beat everyone else. You know what you're good at and what you're not, when, but it's always uh, improving because you can always be better. Just last weekend we went to a, uh, a, an extra practice to try and like get things going, but um, we're seeing if those will translate. Uh, we still got meets to practice, so that'll get me like ready for the meets and um, just work in the dives. Zarns and Mitchell both dove at state last season as sophomores, finishing 11th and 13th respectively. They say that was a learning experience and, if they make it to the finals again, hopefully gives them a better chance. We don't want to put so much pressure on thinking, oh, we got to win, we got to win, but it's more about let's get there and let's do well. Let's get in the top eight. If we win, great. If we don't win, if we make top eight, that's the goal. By their own admission, Mitchell and Zarns are not very close outside the pool but they're both talented, competitive divers, and their strong seasons are at least partially a result of competing against each other every day. It's not the same kind of feels like a team, you're passing the ball between each other in basketball. It's more of a, your own, you're competing against yourself as well as others and beating their high scores. And so it's like that competitive aspect of beating your teammate, but also the fact that it's a teammate because you're helping each other get better. It makes you a better diver for sure. Keeps that competition, even when you don't have competition on the other team, you always want to be the best on your team. So, but yeah, he's a really good kid. It's fun. Mitchell and Zarn should be the two best divers at their section meet and move on to the state tournament. State is by far the most intense and pressure packed meet of the season, and diving well at state is sometimes more mental than physical. If they blow a dive, they need to be able to come back and, and continue to compete because it's really an 11 dive contest. Eric Mitchell and Caleb Zarns have shown themselves to be special divers, and over the next two weeks, they'll aim to put it all together. With section and state titles on the line, this is the time of year when it really matters. Jason Lillo, 12 Sports. Eric Mitchell says he got into diving because his older brother dove for Wyzetta. For Caleb Zarns, it's even more of a family affair. His parents both dove for the University of Minnesota. When we come back, Jay talks girls hockey with Armstrong Cooper.
Welcome back to Sports Jam. A tremendous victory for the Armstrong Cooper girls hockey team in their first playoff game over Hopkins. We're joined by a couple of the girls that helped make it happen, starting with the goaltender Lexi Ripka. And how big of a thrill was this to come out here and play so well as a team, make some big saves like you did? It was so much fun. It was a way to, we competed down to, I don't even know. It was just so much fun to compete and to get back in there and have a great win over the Hopkins, which they said that we couldn't win, but we came out and tried our best and we won. I know there was an article in the paper talking about how good this section was, and it said there are five teams good enough, and you were the number six. Did that bother you guys, or did it fire you up a little bit? It made us mad. It, came, it made us want to come out and play harder and win more. Just our coach wasn't very happy, and she just told us to take it out onto the ice and go play our best. They definitely had some good chances against you. I mean, you stopped that breakaway pretty late in the third period. You, did you feel like this was maybe the sharpest you've been all year or one of the best games you've had? Yeah, I came out and I tried my hardest. I made sure I covered rebounds as quick as I can. It was, it was just really a great game. Benilde is a team that uh, everybody knows a lot about. They've been number one for part of the season. Uh, what would you say the matchup with them might be like? It's going to be a great matchup. We're going to come out our hardest and try our best and try to be, play just like Hopkins. Hopefully we win. All right, thanks for joining us, Lexi, and great job here today. Thank you. And Steph Olson, who had uh, just a tremendous highlight breakaway goal to end that second period. Tell me about that play as you were coming up ice. What were you thinking there? Well, I had no idea there was so little time left, so I was just taking my sweet time, and I knew that I had the whole ice in front of me, and the defense were way behind me, so I just took my time and made a move, and it went in. I said right at the time that that was one Sidney Crosby would have been proud of. I mean, it was just a great move. And uh, had you, you know, in practice or in anything, had you worked that move before? Did you try it on Lexi or your other goaltenders at all? Um, not really. I just played it by ear. I saw that she had, like, committed to me, so I went back another third deep, and it went in. I get the feeling that you girls really don't view this as much of an upset, but you played confident all game long. Is it? Did you come in thinking you had a good shot? Yeah, we came in and knew like if we fought really hard, we could win it. What has gone on throughout this season that's kind of helped you guys get better to this point, and what's really made this team click? Um, just the team chemistry. We've all been just cheering each other on and doing our best and being intense in practice and making sure we all try our hardest all the time. Thanks for joining us. Great win and have fun in the semis. Thank you. Steph Olson and Lexi Ripka of the Armstrong Cooper girls hockey team after getting a playoff win here over Hopkins. We'll be back to wrap up Sports Jam for you here right after this. Follow 12 sports replays and live events on Twitter, Facebook, and live stream. Watch your favorite high school athletes performing live on your computer or mobile device. Link to us on 12.tv. National studies show that students who participate in activities like music, sports, and drama not only have better grades and attendance, but they develop the character to handle adversity, the grace to accept defeat, and the self-confidence to start over. Take part. Get set for life. Our games of the week feature a girls-boys basketball doubleheader between Maple Grove and Osseo. Games are Friday night. Watch the girls live at 6 o'clock and the boys at 8 o'clock. Catch the replay Saturday night here on Channel 12 and on the web at 12.tv. And that will do it for this week's Sports Jam. And next week, highlights from State Nordic Skiing, Section Girls Hockey, and a look ahead to the boys' hockey section playoffs. We'll see you then. Help the hungry by attending the third annual Empty Bowls Robbinsdale event on Thursday, March 21st from 4 to 7 at Sandberg Learning Center. Go to 12.tv for more details.